Hello everyone, welcome back to Quick Coding Bytes. Today, we will be going over another topic that is tested in the ACSL Math section. What does this program do? Frequently, one must modify sections of another programmer's code. Since the original author is often unavailable to explain his or her code, and documentation is, unfortunately, not always available or sufficient, it is essential to be able to read and understand an arbitrary program. The ACSL category presents a program and asks the student to determine what the program does. The programs are written using pseudocode that should be readily understandable by all programmers. This pseudocode format is also used when creating algorithms and trying to solve programming problems. A prerequisite to understand this topic is that you understand basic programming concepts such as decision statements, loops, arrays, and string manipulation. To start, let's take a look at this table and the syntax that is provided with the ACSL pseudocode. So for operators, these operators are straightforward and standard with any major programming language, and they follow this order of precedence, which is again, same in most major programming languages. Then there's some mathematical functions that are defined with ABS representing the absolute value, square root representing square root, um, INT representing the greatest integer, so the greatest integer function. Variables um, will start with a letter and they will only be letters and digits. And then there's sequential statements, so input variable would represent um, get, grabbing an input from the user who's running your program. Um, variable equal to an expression is basically assigning a variable to the value of the expression on the right hand side of the equal sign. An output variable would print the variable to the console in a regular program. We have decision statements, which are again straightforward, which have if Boolean expression then. So uh, we'll look at when we look at a program we'll see how that syntax is structured but that's essentially an if statement there's else's um, and there's end if with indefinite loop statements you can have a while boolean expression then you have a bunch of statements and then you end the while loop um, with definite loop statements you have um, a for variable you start uh, the variable start position to when the, very, when the for loop will terminate, when that value is end, and the step would increment it. Array, so uh, one-dimensional arrays use a single subscript, such as a, um, and you can put parentheses five, and two-dimensional arrays use the row column standard, so A, two, three would be the second row, third column in. And arrays start at location zero for one-dimensional arrays, and Zero, 0 for two dimensional arrays, which is again standard in most languages. And uh, in past, uh, ACSL problems started with either 1 or 1, 1, but now they are 0. And the size of the array will be specified in the program statement. And strings are, are the last part that are used in these pseudocode or in, this, in these problems. Uh, strings can contain zero or more characters, and again, similar to arrays, they start at index zero. Uh, empty string would have a size length at zero. Uh, and unlike Python, a negative position uh, would return an error, and so will uh, getting or indexing or finding a position which is larger than the size of the string itself. The function len, which represents the length, would, um, and for example, if a is a string, and the len of a would represent the length of strings, uh, so like how many characters a string has. Uh, strings are identified using double quotes, um, and you can use square brackets to index particular characters of the string, and you can also get substrings. So if x is ACSL um, space, what does this program do? Uh, we know that this is a size of 10, so this would be four characters, this would be five characters in the space, which represents 10. Then uh, putting nothing, colon three, would take the first three characters starting from the left. Um, putting five, colon nothing, would take the last five characters from the right. 
2, 6 would take uh, the character starting at location 6, um, location 2, and end at location 6. Uh, and you can do string concatenation using the plus symbol. So that's just a basic overview of all the syntax that you will encounter during the what does this program do section. So the first problem we're going to be looking at is the one right here. After the program is executed, what is the final value of num? So we see a is a string which has bananas. And there is a variable num, which is set to zero, and t, which is an empty string. And I was talking about this earlier, how the design of a for loop is. So we can see that in this for loop right here, uh, we have a variable j, which represents len, which was the length of a, so it'd be the length of bananas, minus one, two, zero, step minus one. So what this says is this for loop will loop um, starting with j as the length of a minus one, two, zero, and each step it'll subtract j by one. So let's kind of break this apart. So we see how, what's the length of A? So we see that the length of A is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so J would start at six. So we know that J, J is going to start at six. We know that it'll go to zero and step minus one each time. So going to go to zero and we see that t is t plus a of j so basically this is string concatenation so the first time we go uh, t would be an empty string but we're adding a of j to it so j is six so the sixth uh, so a of six would be so zero one two three four, five, six, it would be s. So we know that the first time around, t is s. And let me just make this more clear, j, good. And then this loop, so then we'll step minus one, so this will turn into five, and then this would be a, because now t is s, and we're adding a to it. And you can see a pattern forming right here, where essentially t is going to be the reverse of a. So in fact, we can write t as we can write t as we can write t as the reverse. So s a n a n a. So instead of instead of trying to go through, you can find a pattern right here, which we saw is just reversing that string, and we can set t to equal that. And now we go next. So this next is actually part of this for loop. So it'll, uh, it'll run this and it'll go to next. So next will bring it back up here. It'll step this by minus one and it'll keep it. And we see there's another for loop here. This one, j starts at zero to length of a minus one. So this will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And um, if a of j is equal equal to t of j, then the number is number plus 1. But observe that there's no step here. So in this for loop, there's no step here. So when there's no step given, then you assume that the step is plus 1. So I'll start at 0, and then you add 1 to it. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Let's see what this if statement is saying. So it's saying if a of j, meaning that the character that's at the jth location in a is equivalent to the character that's located at the jth location of t, then we're adding 1 to the number. And we see that the number starts at 0. So if you think about it, essentially it's, it's saying that you're going to add up each time where the letters line up. So if I were to write, let's write... Let's write bananas here. And if I were to make this bigger, and if we were to line these up, we have to determine in how many times uh, 
these characters line up. So we see that they line up right here. 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 And they line up right over here. So position one, position two, position three, position four, and position five. So five, so that this number will also equal five. So the final value of number, final value of num is five. So as you can see, this is a very simple um, program, but you see we had to use strings. We had to know what len is, uh, which represents the length of the string, and we had to understand how the for loop works, and we had to know that when there's no step given, step is plus one. So the last example I would like to go over is the one right here. So you can see that there's no loops here, but there's a lot of statements and if statements. So there's a lot of problems in ACSL which look similar to this. And the key to solving these problems is to make a table like I've done right here. And after each line, update any of the variables if they change. This will keep your work organized so that come at the end when you have to solve this complex um, equation, it's easy for you to plug in and solve the values and check if you make mistakes if you have extra time at the end. So let's try to do this right here. So we know A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4, E is 4, and F is 6. And I put it right here. Next, the question says if D divided by B is less than F divided by A. So D divided by B, which is 2, if that is less than f, which is 6, divided by a, which is 1. So yes, 2 is less than 6. Then d is d divided by b. Uh, d is d divided by b, which is 2. So that means that d is updated to 2. Next line. a is f to the power of b divided by c to the power of d over b. So here is where you have to remember the order of precedence what comes first so we know what we know we know that uh, we have to first solve d over b so what is d over b well d over b d over b which is 2 divided by 2 which is 1 so c to the power of 1 is still c now we need to look at what f to the power of b is. So what is f? f is 6. f is 6 to the power of uh, b, which is 2. So 6 times, uh, 6 times 6 is 36, divided by 3, which is 12. So that means a is 12. So I'm going to just x these out. We don't need them. The next is if a is less than or equal to f, a is not less than or equal to f. So that means that this entire statement, because there's an and here, this entire statement is false. So then we have to look at the else part. Else b is equal to e. So what is e? e is 4. So that must mean that b is also going to be 4 now. Next is if the absolute value of c minus f, so the absolute value of c minus f is 3, is not equal to the integer or the greatest integer of f divided by c. So f divided by c is 2, and we knew that c minus f was 3. That means they're not equal, which is correct. Then c is f divided by c. So we know that c is f divided by c, so 6 divided by 3, which is 2. If a is equal to b, is a equal to b? No, it's not. Or is c equal to d? Well, c is equal to d. Then a is a plus b. So this means that a is 16. Last but not the least, c is c plus d. So c is 2 plus 2, which is 4.
So we know these are the final values of A, B, C, D, E, F. So when now you just have to solve this entire equation out. And when you do so, you'll get the answer 5. I just don't want to go into the entire work. But uh, once if you follow this equation, you'll get the answer 5. So the key here was to create an organized table. And after each line, you want to update any of the values if they change. And so that when you come to do this final answer, you can just plug in and you'll determine what the final answer is. So the best way to learn this is to do a lot of practice. Um, you can change up the values, create other if statements, and compare it with um, your teammates. Because the more you practice, you'll get a better hang at it. And staying organized is also extremely important, especially when there's a lot of variables involved. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos.